<laughs> Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Kennedy is behind the camera today, so she can't bring us in, but I might let her take us out. I'm hot. For today's video, okay, let me tell you, I'm having the hardest time figuring out what type of content I want to post on my YouTube channel. Vlogmas was really easy, you know, like I post things centered around Christmas. Like, that's easy for me. That's natural for me. But what other content should I post going forward? I know I, I do. I know I want to stay in the vlog lane. I feel like, you know, everybody like, it's it's more personal. You get what I'm saying? Like, I can take y'all behind the scenes with me. Y'all can actually feel like, you know what I'm saying? You here with me. But what other content should I post? Challenges. Kennedy wants me to do challenges. She wants me to do pranks. Yeah, we're going to start pranking you, by the way. No, nah, y'all going to start getting beat up. I hate pranks. I don't like, like, pranks and, like, I get mad for real. So, I don't want to do that. But anyway, today's video is going to be a story time. Leave me a comment below with some suggestions of content that you guys would like to see on my channel. I do know that because of y'all, I have a channel <laughs> and... It's only because of you guys that I'll be successful on my channel. So leave some comments, leave me some suggestions on things that I should do. So today's story time is, it's about parenting. It's about motherhood. I have a couple of confessions to make to you guys. I see a lot of comments saying, you're such a great mother. I love how you are with your children. You know, you and your girls have the best person, you know, I mean the best bond. You know, I see all of these comments. And I just wanted to share some things, a couple things with you guys. One, it has not always been like that. Um, all of my girls have different fathers. And I had them like boom, boom, back to back. Madison was born in 2008, Kennedy 2009, Riley 2010, right? So having them in the middle of trying to survive, my pride wouldn't let me act. I know y'all think y'all your parents are rich, so no, I was in them streets. I was I can't say I can't say everything that I was doing, but I was definitely stripping. I was shoplifting. I waited tables, I was a CNA. You know, I did, I done a lot of things cuz I felt like my kids are my responsibility. And I shouldn't ask anybody to help me take care of my children, right? That Which is why I didn't call my parents or I didn't, you know what I mean? Like, I'm talking about on the financial side. So, I had to hustle and figure out ways to feed my kids, to buy diapers, to do all of that. This is when they were very little. I wasn't engaged or I wasn't connected with my children the way that I should have been. I mean, I clothed them, I fed them, they were bathed, we had somewhere to live, they had their rooms, they had toy they had all of those things but they didn't have me if that makes sense i was just you know going through life make just surviving and i didn't i wasn't really sitting down on the floor with them and like playing games and you know what i'm saying just engaging and bonding with them i didn't start doing that until madison was about four years old she wasn't mistreated or neglected or anything but i didn't i wish i would have started connecting with them earlier um, I don't know that it would make a difference because the bond that we I have with them now is is dope. Like, you know, it's I wouldn't trade have it any other way, but I said all of that to say it has not always been this way. I was surviving. If so, if you are a mother and you are just surviving and you trying to make it through and just make sure they have clothes, make sure they're fed, make sure they just surviving, take a minute, I promise you, stop. Sit down, engage with them, connect with them, talk to them. We don't treat kids like humans. People, we don't treat kids like humans. They're hum they're a little bit of humans <laughs> with feelings. We just treat them like, oh, those they're just kids. They don't have feelings. You hush, what I say goes, nothing else matters. That's that's setting I felt like for me, I'ma just I'ma speak for me. I felt like I was setting them up for failure. And it really took for me to click one day like Portia, you're not engaging with them the way that you should engage with them. You're not connecting with them. Yes, your feet. I didn't play though. Like my kids was at home. Like, you know what I'm saying? I just, I had them, 
But they didn't have me. Oh, that's a word that I preach, girl. Period. <laughs> Period. I was going through issues with my baby daddies, trying to figure out how my lights got turned off like every couple weeks at one point in my life. I would like literally go in the store and take things. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> like, pride is... Pride will cause you to do a lot of things and cause you a lot of heartache. Unnecessary heartache. Don't let your pride do that to you. If you need help, say, hey, I need help. Every, it's okay for everybody to need, to need help. They're not a bur I was thinking I was going to be a burden. Or that I was requiring somebody else to take care of my responsibilities. When that simply wasn't the case. Like, I just needed... You know what I'm saying? Just a little help. So a little backstory. Um, my mom, I moved to a different town than my dad and bonus mom were in. So I moved to the town that my biological mom was in when I was 20. And then had Madison when I was 21. <laughs> Kennedy. Then Riley. <laughs> I had them back to back. And I really was just, for like seven years, I was like, I was thugging it out. Y'all really was thugging it out. But I came to a point where I was like, mother, parenting and motherhood means so much to me. And I care about the humans that I'm sending out into the world. I care about my children in a way to where it was like, okay, Portia, you need to get your shit together. You know, rebalance some stuff, refocus, figure out what you need to do. Don't beat yourself up for what you didn't do. You were surviving. You were trying to figure it out. What do you need to do going forward? All right, boom, we're going to watch movies. I'm going to sit down with them. We're going to actually talk, have conversations. I've been talking to my kids since they were little. So the way that y'all see us go back and forth now and the way, like, the banter you see, I've been talking to them since they were little. I mean, not like goo goo gaga. I've been, like, real live talking. Like, my kids wiped tears when <laughs> I was going through stuff. Things that they should not have had to do as toddlers and you know what I'm saying? Things that they shouldn't have had to do. So when I say them, my niggas, them, my niggas, like we've been through a lot. But I just want to speak to parents, mothers, but parents also. Talk to your kids. Talk to them. Listen to how they feel. Get an understanding and just really learn their love languages and then do that. Um, it's easy to just say, hush, go sit down because I said so. And you just go through like not talking to them, not explaining things to them. And I'm not saying explain your know, every move. Cause sometimes I don't know, I'd be like, look, I just do this because I said so right now. And then on the back, <clears throat> on the back end, I might explain it to them later. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, Hey, earlier I wasn't trying to yell at you. I wasn't trying to, but you were just asking too many questions <laughs> at the wrong time. But I try not to ever leave it just like that to where they're wondering if they have quick my kids will come to me they can come to me ask me mama uh we've talked about sex we've talked about drug anything any question that they have i try to answer it according to their age if that makes sense like if it's some stuff i'll be like no i'm not ready to talk to, we're not ready to talk about that but just i just don't want to i just care about i just care about the little people that i'm sending into the world it is my duty, it's my responsibility to raise them, to teach them, to guide them. So I felt like I was failing them in the beginning by not engaging with them. So fast forward, I'm like, okay, Portia, you doing this? You talking to them? And every day is not peach. I have to apologize to my kid. Do not be too big to apologize to your children. If you've done something, a simple, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. I didn't mean to do that. That's not going to hurt you. Like, <laughs> apologize to your kids when you're wrong. Listen to them, sit down, get an understanding, treat them. Remember that they are humans. I tell my kids all the time about me too. Hey, don't y'all put me up on a pedestal. I am simply a human being and I will disappoint. If you put all your faith in me, I'm going to disappoint you. Every time. Don't put your faith in another human being. Put your faith in God because that's who, <laughs> that's the one who, is no, who will never disappoint you. Don't put your, don't put your faith in me. And I think, you know, I just listen to them sometimes and I sit back and watch them. And I'm like, oh, okay, they get it. Like, it makes me feel, some days I feel good as a mother. Some days I feel like, damn, what else could I be doing? You know what I mean? Like, that's me in my own head, though. What else could I be doing? What else could I be teaching them? What else? Like, I feel like I did so much playing in my early years that I'm playing catch-up now. 
even as a parent, like in my financial life, my work life, career, all of that, I feel like I'm playing catch up because I did a bunch of playing before I had my kids and during the time that my kids were like, you know, like one, two, three, four. So I moved away from the town, Hillsboro, the top. I still have a, a, a love for Hillsboro though. Um, a lot of people move away from their hometowns and they're like, oh, I'm never going back. Like my kids was born in that town. A lot of my character character was built in that town. Like Hillsboro will always have a special place in my heart, but I had to move away from there to grow. So once I moved back to the city, you know what I'm saying? I, I just felt like I was on a different path. And it's not a dig at Hillsboro, but I was just, I just outgrew it in a sense. You know what I'm saying? I just needed to move on a different path to do different things, different opportunities, give my kids different opportunities. I felt like it put me in a better headspace because if I'm not 100%, what can I give them? And that's how I've always thought about it with my girls. Like, one, we're going to talk. We're going to talk. We're going to heal. We're going to address. We're going to get an understanding over here. That's the main thing. So once I kind of put that, apply that to my life, I'm like, okay, they're young. But now that they're getting older, it's like, oh, I really got to. You know what I'm saying? Like, the money, financial part is the easiest raising children for me. That's the easiest. Like, it's the dealing with each personality, figuring out each love language, and then loving them according to that. That's the most difficult part for me. That's what keeps me up at night. <laughs> That's what makes me call my husband and be like, babe, I feel like I'm failing. I'm not doing a good heavy like, girl, them kids got a good mama. You, babe, you're doing the right thing. Kennedy just said, mama, I think you are a good mama. I want you to think you're doing nothing wrong. Oh my head, <laughs> it's not that I was doing anything wrong. I just felt like I should have been doing more. I should have been connecting with y'all on an emotional level, and I wasn't. I was just. Mom, do you realize I don't remember nothing from one our ages one? <laughs> <laughs> I the last memory I remember when I was young is our apartment. No, I know, but I'm glad you don't remember that. But my thing is, what if I would have kept doing that? So now I'll, you wouldn't, me and you wouldn't have the bond that we have. Me and Riley, me and Madison, we wouldn't have the bond or the relationship that we have had I not stopped and been like, okay, you just surviving. You just going through life. You need to really engage with them emotionally. Learn their love languages. Love them that way. Talk language. to them and understand. My love language is definitely quality time. I think I feel like me and you have the same love language. Yeah. Madison is like gifts. Gifts. <laughs> like Riley's. Me. I don't know what Riley's love. Riley, what is your love language? I'm still trying to figure out her love language. I think Riley's like a little bit of gifts because she likes stuff to get stuff. Yeah, but, but I don't feel like Riley care about gifts like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. I don't even even quality time because she's a loner. I'm still learning Riley's love language. We, because <laughs> uh, it changes. Riley. She probably she gonna be like, uh, I don't know what my love language like? is. Pooh, what would you say your love language is? Mine is quality time. I like quality time. I could care less about gifts. She Madison is gifts. Let's look up the love languages. Where's my uh, girl? I can say where my phone. Yeah, and it's right here. We are going to look up all of the love languages so that we can figure out which one is Riley's. Me and Riley, we just have a connection or we have an understanding because we kind of the same people. So if, I feel like hers is quality time, but not too much because leave me alone because I want to be by myself. Mm -hmm. What you think? Mm -hmm. I'm going to read them all to you and then we're going to figure out what your love language is. I think mine is tough love, but Tough love. No, I'm gonna read them to you, and then you can get a better understanding. Here you can. Let me see. I don't know. But y'all, thank y'all for 10k. <laughs> yeah, thank y'all exactly for getting your girl to 10k. I had a very successful, successful December we last gonna be month. Me and Ray gonna be doing pranks on Dan and her. No, nah, don't do that. She don't like pranks, but we should do like challenges, like fun stuff. So y'all know it. Be really fun. Challenges. I don't want to do no challenges. Okay, so words of affirmation. This love language expresses love with words that build up your partner. Verbal compliments don't have to be complicated. The shortest and simplest praises can be the most effective. 
that dress looks incredible on you. You've always made me laugh. <laughs> okay, acts of service, which means your partner might have this love language if their motto is actions speak louder than words. This love language expresses itself by doing things, hold on, by doing things that you know your spouse would like, cooking a meal, doing the laundry, and stuff like that. I don't think yours is acts of service. Ooh. Receiving gifts, that's a given. Nice Quality time or physical touch. I think I know Riley's love language is physical touch. <laughs> because she is a very affectionate child. As introverted as she is, and like she's a real loner. But she will come cuddle in my bed like she is one years old. She will come cuddle up to anybody. Her sis, I've seen her cut. She, physical touch. She be acting like a baby. She do. Physical touch and quality time, I'll say for Riley. Kennedy is quality time. And I feel like words of affirmation. Madison is Yeah, I'm, words of, I'm the word one and the quality time. Yeah. Madison's the open up a little. Like when we say you love me, she said, I love you back. And when she actually hugs us and stuff now. Yeah. She actually hugs us and stuff now. See, Madison going through that teenage phase, so get out! I don't get out of my room. I'm going back to my Kennedy, room. Kennedy, what are you? What Look are you at doing? my hair. <laughs> I can't. Let me, I can't get Kennedy hair braided, y'all, because she is in a dance on a dance team, and I have it's competition perfect. season, and I have to make sure that her hair is always like I can I switch it up. Getting that COVID test. Yes, and tomorrow. she has to take a COVID test tomorrow before she can go back to dance. So that'll be. I'm going to cry. I might stream that. But anyway, learn the love languages of your children. I felt like I knew them all. I just got tripped up with Riley's. I didn't, until I read it. Like, I feel like I knew what it was. But now I'm like, okay, it's for sure. Physical touch. <laughs> My baby is, she's very affectionate. She's just misunderstood. But anyway, that was a quick little story time about my journey through motherhood. It is not over because I'm now coming into teenage. So I might be coming back on here to do another video like, y'all, help me out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let the people know what they can do. All right. Ooh, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. We're going to end this video right here. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, and turn on the post notification bell so y'all get notified every time me and my mom or our family post a new YouTube video. Peace.